Um, so good afternoon. Um, I'm Melanie Batz, the CTO at OBO. Um, so thank you for joining me today for this talk, Shake Me Up Before You Go Go. Um, the purpose of this talk is not to talk about WAM uh, and not about George Michael, um, but to share our path and practical insight about how we move at OBO to a new process to build our open source product. And so before we start, I encourage you to connect to menti.com uh, if you haven't already, because we'll be playing a game just in a few minutes and that will require your participation. So um, let's dive into the essential question. So why do we need to move uh, to a new process? And so why do we need transformation? So in software development, adaptability is paramount. And so we'll delve into the driving process behind our journey, exploring the reasons that led us to this transformative path. Um, we initiated this transformation three years ago when we began our work on an innovative open source project, the Serious Web project. Uh, our primary objective was to enhance our agility and efficiency throughout its development to better accommodate evolving needs. So just in order that you get our context, Serious Web is an open source project and is a successor of the Serious Desktop, another Eclipse open source project, inheriting the same philosophy. Um, however, it's important to note that Serious Web is not just a simple continuation of its desktop predecessor. Uh, instead, it signifies for OBO a complete overall, meticulously reimagined and rewritten to seamlessly adapt to web technologies. It serves as open source platform for defining modeling environments tailored to specific business concerns. Um, with Sirius, you have the ability to define the concepts of your domain and create customized tooling. It offers a low-code platform for building custom web or desktop for the previous one applications that support specific visual languages. And here you can see an example of a kind of model that we've created using Sirius Web. So, um, the first question I will try to answer is what motivates us to shift from our established development approach for Sirius Desktop to a new one for the Sirius Web project? So to gain a deeper understanding of why we need this transformation and to uncover our pain points, so I propose we play a game all together. And if you're wondering, yes, it's important to participate because I need to be sure that you are still awake, we're in the afternoon, it's quite hard, and because there is a reward waiting for you at the end. So um, I want you to imagine that you are a developer at a chocolate bar company, uh, your mission, create the perfect chocolate bars that will delight our customers. To achieve this, we will release different versions of our product and we will collect feedbacks from diverse range of stakeholders. So I need you to join the chocolate bar game. And so we will create the first V1 of our product. Um, it's a initial product, it's an initial product release, and for that, we need to select the essential features for your chocolate bar. So it's the minimum viable product for you. So, okay, we can start. We have some players. Are you ready? Okay. So the first question for your first release. Select the base for your chocolate bar. It's the minimum for a chocolate bar. So what do you choose, white, milk, or black? You have seven seconds to choose. Okay, almost everyone, everyone has voted, good. So, okay, two, two white, four milk, eight black. Why? Milk is a good answer. Because we have customers' feedbacks. We have a first feedback from George. He said, I ate black chocolate. Okay, so, he will just eat if we produce a black chocolate bar. And we have another customer feedback from Michael. He said, I prefer sweeter and milder flavor. Okay, so that's why the good answer from our first release was we need to produce milk chocolate bar. Now we'll see who is the best product, produce, the best product owner. Okay, so Martin is the best one. Okay, we'll see for the next version. 
the V2. The V2 of our product release, we will incorporate additional features because just chocolate bar is okay. So, you have some more choices. For your V2 version, select the toppings for your chocolate bar. Okay, you can choose between nuts, fruits, caramel, wafers, or we can do a mix, as you want. Several answers are possible. So, the good answer was caramel and wafers. Okay, why is that? Because our marketing feedbacks from our company is that nuts, no, not in our bars. We want to be allergy friendly delight for everyone. So, you can be put nuts in your bars. Okay, who is the best product owner now? Ah. Still Martin, good. Next version. So we prepared the first, the third product release and we try to incorporate additional functionalities now. So what would it be? You have choice now between sel to select term for your chocolate bar. So you have the choice to put on your bar, nothing special, gluten-free bar, non-GMO bar, fair trade bar, or organic chocolate bar. And same, it could be a mix. You can answer many things. Okay, so yes, we want fair and straight organic bar. Why is that? Because our CEO, Steve Bobbs, said, I want eco-friendly chocolate excellence. He has a vision, you see? Okay. So, okay, so what we have learned thanks to this game, uh, we've discovered that the decision-making process to create a chocolate bar or software involves numerous stakeholders. So as we reflect on our old long-standing decision-making processes at Hobo, we can represent the developer's dilemma, uh, what like this. First, you have inputs that originate from your JIRA, you know, your internal issue tracking system. Now let's expand the picture. We are working on an open source project. So imagine that alongside Jira, we also have Bugzilla in the mix, uh, the issue tracker for the open source community. There is another element to consider when you create a software, the direct channel. This primarily comprises your colleagues from any departments, sales, marketing, or other developers, but also individuals uh, out of your company will contact you via various channels like email or direct messaging. Now let's introduce another aspect, the personal vault. Uh, this represents the individual desires and ideas of the developers team, what they personally want to bring to the project, refactoring, dependencies update, and so on. In the end, in our long-standing decision-making ecosystem, we can identify four primary stakeholders. The customers, the open source community, you, the developers, and your company. So these four key players play essential roles in shaping the development path. And at the earth of this integrated web, we find you, the project leads, the developers, and this role so is pivotal in balancing the needs of customers, community, and more. So now imagine our year, as a set of warming stripes, each representing a different phase of development. First period, it's New, re new Year's resolutions. So we start the year by track tackling important company and community issues. We are full of hope and believe uh, that is uh, this year we will work on what is important for us, and important for us as developers, important for us as a company. And then comes the second period. Uh, we come to be customer centric. So in the second quarter, everything is going back to normal. Uh, it's all about making the customer happy, uh, even with specific requests, which will not be so important for your product, but that's it. Third period, uh, vacation season. We are French, we have lots of vacation. And um, so we adapt to fill gaps, uh, less by vacation, focusing on in office needs. Fourth period, it is conference season. So we create marketing features for effective communication. And yes, it is already December, season for year hand focus. And finally, as the year hands, everyone else is on vacation again. So you, the developer of the project, you reserve very few time for what matters most for you, for the team, and you have almost one or two weeks to work on that. 
So these stripes show how our development activities were heavily impacted by all the priorities throughout the year. So conclusion, achieving harmony among these diverse perspectives and priorities is essential, and as it ensures that we focus our efforts on what truly matters. So this marks the beginning of our transformation, transitioning from our well-established development process to a more agile one tailored for our new project. So our journey encompasses three transformative steps. And the first step is centered around prioritization. So we want to work on what truly matters. For this transformation step, the key result we fixed was to define a formal decision-making process. So to achieve this, we are now relying on the shape-up methodology, and it provides us with the structural Framework with a structured framework needed to make informed decisions and prioritize effectively ensuring alignment with our objectives. So now our decision-making process has evolved into a collaborative effort. It's not only the developers that need to choose alone. So this shift underscores our close partnership with a dedicated decision team composed by one member from the direction, the sales, marketing, and the products. And Together, we navigate the complex development landscape, ensuring that every decision is well informed and aligned with our goals. So now let's move forward to our second step. We decided to review our release cycles. In this step, our key result was clear. We aim to maintain constant operational and functional software through fixed release schedules. Simultaneously, we allocate dedicated time for essential topics and regular free periods for maintenance and experimentation. So this dual approach ensures software reliability and innovation. Now, moving on to our third and final step. So while ZeroSwipe is a new and innovative project in itself, it doesn't stand alone. It serves as a platform that other projects rely on to create their products. Therefore, managing Serious Web independently is not sufficient. We must consider how to evolve all our products to align the with the, the new decision-making process effectively. So our goal is to ensure that all our products can seamlessly adapt to the new development cycle. It's the culmination of our journey, harmonizing our entire product ecosystem with our evolved approach. So as I said, Serious Web is an independent open source project, but it is consumed by many other projects, and some managed by us, which are open source projects, others which are open source projects, and much more that are uh, out of our control. So we needed this final step in our evolving process as uh, this final step marks the pivotal moment when our entire product portfolio aligns with our evolved development cycle. In brief, uh, what we did to make our development process evolve comprises step one, focus and decision with a formal decision-making process based on shape-up. Step two, reliable releases with consistent software quality and agile schedules. Step three, all together, to ensure adaptation across all products. So these steps define our path to ensure adaptability and value delivery across the, um, uh, across the board. So. It's important to acknowledge that the journey hasn't been a walk in the park, uh, and we met lots of challenges. So our first challenge revolves around determining the most suitable rhythm for our release cycles. The second challenge centers on ensuring that our other, that, uh, yes, that our other products relying on Serious Web align with the changes we are implementing, so creating a kind of cohesive development landscape. Serious Web is an open source platform to create other tooling. So we have lots of different stakeholders, as you see, asking for features according to their own needs. And so the third challenge involves striking a balance between developing core project components and addressing customer specific requirements. New projects means new team. Um, in the company, and so we have a new team at Hobio dedicated to full-time development on the Serious Web Open Source project, and they are making significant contributions, producing numerous new enhancements in a shorter cycle than what we are used to. So our fourth challenge revolves around maintaining integration velocity 
and ensuring that every feature developed aligns similarly with our product's uh, core objectives. As long-time Eclipse platform developers at Hobio, uh, we are expanding our horizons with uh, the Serious Web project embracing the world of web technologies. And so our fifth challenge focuses on enhancing team efficiency by upgrading our proficiency in web technologies. So in the realm of software development, even for a new open source project, the development cycle is more akin to dynamic rivers and a tranquil stream. So here it's not just about creating new features all the time, it's also about efficiently managing urgent matters that can surface unexpectedly. So our sixth challenge we met is centered on efficiently managing urgent matters that often arise and it could be bug fixes, customer requests, or staffing changes. So from the very outset of our transformation, uh, we set also our sights on adopting modern and agile practices that span the entire software development lifecycle, including our deployment. So our goal has been to enable swift deployment of new enhancements, and almost this is it. You have all the challenges we, we met, and as you can see, these challenges, cycles, downfall, upstream, velocity, um, level up, urgencies, continuous deployment, collectively paint a picture of the complexities we face during our transformation journey. So now that you have a clear overview of the three main steps we've taken and the challenges we have encountered, let's dive into the real solutions we've put in place. So. In addressing our first challenge, we experimented with various cycles, as I said, before discovering the optimal one which fit for our team. This will not fit maybe for your team, but it works for us. Uh, we've adopted a release cycle of six weeks of development, followed by two weeks of cooldown. So this approach allows us to strike balance between continuous progress and necessary breaks. Our development cycle now spans eight weeks in total, with two six weeks parallel cycles, discovery and delivery, and followed by a two week cooldown period. During the first four week cycle, the discovery team qualifies the pipeline. So our continuous discovery pipeline is our response to the ever evolving landscape of project development. So picture it as an alambic. Um, refining and destyling our ideas to opportunities, ensuring that we stay aligned with our goals in this dynamic environment. In our Alambic, we distill key inputs like customer feedback, sales expectation, consultant insights, directional objectives, and open source community issues because we're an open source project. So these elements shape our decision-making process, maintaining our ability and alignment with various perspectives. This is the space where we ensure that we address the essential requirements of our done for projects. To achieve this, we've incorporated regular interviews with them. So it's as simple as a discussion. Uh, these interviews help us remain in sync with the particular demands of these projects and identify which requirements should be integrated into the open source project upstream. This responsibility is overseen by the product owner. Um, is the one who keeps the pot boiling in our um, lambic analogy. Um, the product owner acts as the spark, igniting the process and qualifying the pipeline, ensuring that our decision making is fueled by the right ingredients and opportunities. So based on the feedbacks, uh, the product owner derives a bunch of opportunities. And the condenser houses pitches, which are opportunities prepared for presentation to the decision team. Remember the one I presented earlier composed with all those stakeholders. So our pitch templates consist of three sections. First, you find the opportunity we want to address. Um, so what's the, what is the problem we want to solve? Then the key results, what we want in the hand after the development. And OK, what is the current state of the project right now? Then the cycle includes the first synchronization meeting where the decision team gathers for almost one hour to select opportunities and define an appetite for each one. So appetite sets the time limit for solution development, uh, guiding the team's effort within defined constraints. We no longer ask the team, how long do you need to develop this feature? 
but instead we allocate time and resources to a specific topic and inquire what valuable contribution can you propose within this time frame. So in our alambic, rejected pitches return to the alambic to, for further consideration, while the selected ones in alignment with the given appetite begin the process of being shaped by the team. We are week six uh, in our cycles. The product owners and tech team collaborate to shape solutions that align with the defined appetite. And so here's the template for shaping a solution. Um, a solution should add value to the product within the set effort constraints, the appetite. So it considers potential rabbit holes and red flags to brainstorm before implementation to anticipate and mitigate what could go wrong. So here you can see it's time for the second decision making, the decision team meeting, uh, where we present the shaped solutions for final selection before moving through on to implementation. So following wing this, the alambic process is finalized and we have collectively determined the developments for the up upcoming cycle. So everyone is okay with, with what will be implemented. Then the technical team refines the shapes, ensuring that they are ready for implementation. And they also assess if any testing or additional learning is needed to develop this solution during the next iteration. Then starts the second phase, the delivery one. During the kickoff, the technical team translates the shape solution into actionable items. So we have scopes that are defined. They outline the next step for what we for that, we just rely on GitHub projects and the team creates the related GitHub issues, so no specific tools. Um, in parallel, if needed, we have to create some breadboarding to plan UX and UI evolutions. For that, we are using Figma. And uh, finally, we are using architecture decision records. So architecture decision records, Heidi here, are written to define the necessary architectural and technical evolutions. We adopted architecture decision records as it serves to address velocity and level of challenges. Eight years help in streamlining the development process by minimizing back and forth discussion during implementation and reducing misunderstandings that might arise later during code reviews. So we also use eight years because um, it supports the growth of team members. Um, for example, more experienced members review eight years and discuss them before implementation, which contributes to the global development of the team. So an idea details the rationale behind our technical decision with uh, three key sections. The first one, you have the context to explain the situation prompting the decision. Uh, the second one is the decision to describe the chosen solution that you will implement really in your code. And the third one, the consequences to forecast the expected outcomes. So the Sirswap project has accumulated nearly 100 ideas in three years. So this reflects our commitment to transparent and informed decision making with the open source community. So earlier, I said that the team starts the delivery cycle by defining scopes. Concretely, it is represented by GitHub issues tracked in our GitHub project board. So, have you ever been faced with an enormous pull request that seemed never ending? Um, this is a common challenge we encountered early in our journey. So our initial mistake was not segmenting the implementation of a feature finely enough. So now we use the scopes to break down this massive task into manageable pieces. And scopes act like track signals helping us keep our development process on the right path, ensuring focused work, which is valuable and can be efficiently integrated by the team. So at the start of an iteration, you are have just preliminary outlines, much like raw potatoes, uh, awaiting transformation into specific development tasks or scopes. And as developers take over, these shaping outlines start to reveal uh, specific tasks and actions. And day by day, throughout the iteration, scopes are diligently completed, inching us closer to our objectives. And this TD progress continues until the entire feature is ready to shine. So in this implementation phase, we depend on code reviews. 
Uh, this serves as uh, a dual purpose. Firstly, they ensure code quality. And the second aspect, more importantly, they create an opportunity for the team to share knowledge, and this aspect plays a crucial role in addressing the level up challenge. In this implementation phase, we are focused on integrating a significant amount of work within a short four week period, as I said. So, to further enhance velocity and streamline of um, the, the substantial parallel contribution, we made the decision to transition the serious web repository, which was a classical Git repository, to a mono repo structure. We adopt a mono repo consolidating whole components code into a single repository for many reasons. Um, this objective is to streamline code reuse, simplify dependency management, and prove and, and yeah, and provide flexible code ownership to enhance our development efficiency. So at the same time, code owners emerged as a solution to velocity issues as well. And instead of relying on just one person for integration, we now have designated code owners speeding up the review and integration process. For that, we use the code owners feature provided by GitHub, and it facilitates streamlined code integration and ownership distribution. So the code owners are integrated during the whole implementation process, from the idea to the final inter integration. So they are doing the review not only for the code, but also for the, from the beginning. So in our quest for maintaining constant operational and functional software, uh, we faced our final challenge. To tackle this, we, choose, we, we chose to rely on well-established technologies, not so much fun things here, for our continuous deployment, we are just using GitHub Actions and AWS. These tools enable us to achieve a seamless and efficient CD process with minimal complexity. So our continuous development practices encompass various classical elements. First, version control. We manage our code on GitHub overseen by the Eclipse Foundation with Autodog. Uh, we also have continuous integration, so our CI so our builds rely on GitHub Actions, as I said, covering checks for pull requests and IP, as well as continuous integration tasks such as building, running tests, and deploying. Uh, so we have automated testing. Our CI pipeline runs tests to maintain code quality. We use Arch units for architecture checks, GUnit tests for backend tests, and Cypress tests for integration tests. And for continuous deployment, so for the CD part, we just deploy instances on AWS with staging on the master branch to ensure up-to-date functionality. And we also provide demos of done for products at the end of each iteration, and specific demos also for our customers' projects whenever updates are needed. So uh, we manage this with also infrastructure as code principles, and so Terraform scripts are employed to manage our AWS infrastructure. And finally, we just leverage AWS capabilities for ongoing monitoring. So this led us in week four of the cycle. We reached a significant milestone. It is the first release candidate, which marks the feature freeze. And following the first release candidate, we allocate two weeks to test and stabilize the version. So all the team tests the release candidate manually, tracing this work with a dedicated tool, Kiwit SMS, which is an open source test, test management software. Uh, during this period, we test features, fix bugs, we retest until we are happy with the quality of the release. S week six marks the arrival of the second release candidates, which is usually the final one. So um, it's the release which is ready to sail smoothly into production. Then it is a quiet period. This is directly inspired by the Eclipse simultaneous release. Sometimes it's just essential to pause and wait just in case, you know, before the grand final, because if needed, this is used uh, when we, we need some more time to be able to respin for another release candidate. We are week eight, so it's general availability, the moment we've been waiting for. Uh, when all our hard work and dedication culminates in a new refined version uh, for everyone to enjoy. Yeah, but D is not the final stage. Uh, to address downfall consumption, 
We provide a change log within Serious Web, which tracks and communicates all software changes. Here you can see a snapshot of the Serious Web change log. It is a comprehensive record of all updates and improvements made to the project. Again, our purpose is to ensure transparency and clarity in our development process. So in the real world, waiting for eight weeks and expecting that every change will neatly fit into the shape up process isn't always practical. Uh, so we need to have the flexibility to refactor code, fix small bugs, respond to customer requests, and so maybe adapt to staffing changes as some people can be ill sometime. So to address these matters efficiently, we have several solutions. Uh, the first one is the cooldown period. This practice enables us to handle unexpected work without causing disruption in our regular development cycle. So during week seven and eight of the cycle, we are in cooldown state. Uh, here we focus on important tasks. It could be like something like documentation, experiments, bug fixes. So integrated um, all this stuff, stuff like uh, bug fixes could be then not re integrated in the current release, but this is the kickoff and the start of the next release. So. So another way also to face surgences is to have a dev on call. So our dev on call strategy designates one developer per iteration. And this developer is ready to swiftly handle customer blocker bugs, support pre-sales activities, and if there is no urgency, he dedicates his time to work on the technical depth. So this is good. <laughs> And the cycle begins anew. So during the first two weeks of the new iteration, we take some time to share essential updates from the previous cycles. And so the responsibility for this communication rotates among the developers. So as I mentioned, we have numerous dependent projects relying on our open source project. And to streamline the integration process, we introduce synchronized cycles. So we harmonize all our products, both open source and closed source, onto a unified schedule. Finally, the last concept we introduce is uh, enablers as a solution to level up upstream and urgent challenges. Enablers are developers, and they play a crucial role in assisting downfall projects to level up or incorporate core project evolution in their own project or to upstream evolution they made directly to the product. So as this session comes to the end, I suggest you to read the really good book, Team Topologies, which offers valuable insight into how to integrate enablers into your development process. So in contrast to traditional open source projects, our approach offers distinct advantages. From a company perspective, you got structural strategy discussions. So we maintain a formal process for aligning long-term and short-term requirements, ensuring meticul meticulous uh, project management. We gain stakeholder alignment. Our approach fosters close alignment with the open source community, the customers, and our company's vision. And then from a developer viewpoint, you have focused development. We prioritize concentrated development efforts. And you have balanced workloads. Uh, we ensure balanced workloads through the cycle, avoiding sporadic contributions, so you have time to work on, some time to be more free. And from the open source community perspective, you got regular cycles, so we are there to predictable development cycles, avoiding irregular practices. You gain open evolutions, we actively discuss and define evolutions in the open, providing clear directions. So our journey is ongoing, and we are continuously learning and refining our processes. And this approach has proven effective in managing our different products, even an open source one within a complex, st or complex um, landscape like uh, the Serious Web one, and ev with an ever-evolving ecosystem. So one last thing before you leave. Uh, it's time to announce the winner of the chocolate bar game. And so the winner is Ta da Woo T twenty one. Who's T twenty one? Okay. Yeah. So you win your chocolate but it's only the V two, there is no it's not a yeah, you, there is no V three possible in the camera. <laughs> Uh, 
And so thank you for your attention. And no, I'd be happy to take any question you may have about all these things. Do you have a question? Yeah. The tax management reform framework we're using? Kiwi TCMS. It's a test management framework. It's an open source one. It's not so the UI is not so good, but it do just the, the job. So yeah, it's Kiwi TCMS. Okay. Is there other questions? No. Thanks. I'll be at the booth if you have any question later today. Thanks.